Welcome to an unscheduled, unannounced show for late afternoon in the Philippines. Okay. I'm on a very odd time here, but I don't schedule my shows, but that's okay. Okay. Yeah, kind of an odd time being on here, but I said I don't really schedule my shows. I came in a little while ago. We had a, uh, oh my God, we had a late lunch. That's what we had. And before I go on my story, I must recommend, particularly the restaurant I go to had the, one of the best chicken parmesan that you're going to find out here. Now, what I do basically is I order the chicken parmesan. And then what I do when I order the chicken parmesan, I said, just give me two slices of uh, toasted garlic bread. So I'll eat some of the parmesan, then I'll take the rest of it, and I'll make a sandwich out of that. Now, this is kind of layered with some ribbons of mozzarella, eggplant. The sauce, I mean, is really good. I mean, if they could just use that on a pizza, I'd be really happy. Because you can't find good sauce that's going to really enhance the flavor of your pizza. And a lot of times, they'll even use things like uh, some kind of oyster sauce in there instead of instead of olive oil and, and so forth and so forth. Excellent. I don't need to eat dinner for a long time tonight. I, what I did was I didn't even finish the whole chicken parmesan. I left half of it so that later on I could toast up some bread and a little garlic on it and a little olive oil and I could do the same damn thing. Really tasty. I must recommend. Here's a funny thing. The question is, who doesn't she know? Put it that way. I'm referring, of course, to my life partner, girlfriend. Uh... We're in this restaurant. It's a, it's a popular restaurant we go to, one of them anyway. And uh, then she tells me at the end, yeah, I see her talking to some gal there. And they're new owners. There was a different ownership from somebody that came from Oregon. I think during the pandemic, they closed down or something. Anyway, it's her Filipino friend. She knows from Zumba. I said, you know her? She's like, I walked away for a while. Like, who, who are you talking to? She goes, yeah, it's my friend from Zumba. She's the owner. I said, she's the owner? And I said, who is it that you don't know in this town? My God, she knows the mayor and his wife. She knows people from the barangay, people from the police station, other restaurants, other businesses. I'm saying, damn, and double damn. I mean, that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. I'm just saying that, you know, when I say she's connected, I mean, she is connected. And if not just for friendships, it's, I, I'm just constantly amazed, really. Constantly amazed. But the chicken parmesan, I wish I could show you it, was really excellent. And I'm really fussy about the foods I eat when I go out into a restaurant. I really am. You know, you want to lay out the money, but you want something good for the money. So it's a tried and true situation. Now, I see there's not a lot of people out here, just a couple of people, but that's okay because uh, I realize what time I'm on here. You can see the show afterwards. People see the show afterwards, but that's not a big deal. But as I said, I don't, I don't always schedule my shows. I just come on uh, you know, randomly. I mean, that's I enjoy it more that way. So I'm, I'm more spontaneous. And I realize there's better times to come on here and, and, and to do a show, but that's okay. But, uh, you know, I find it it's just so hard to believe. You know, <laughs> yeah, try writing to a restaurant owner about me. <laughs> See what your response is. I'll tell you that right now. I'll direct this to somebody. Yeah, they know us. Believe me, they know us in this town. We give them business, and they know, especially my girlfriend. I mean, who doesn't know her in this town? I don't know. I suppose there's somebody, somebody that doesn't know her, but uh, pretty well connected, I must say. But then again, we've been here for quite a while, quite a while. And believe me, these people and store owners they're notified about the chicanery with the uh, trolls. Trust me on that. They are. Even the people at the PNP. They know me too. <laughs> Shit, we know the fucking mayor and his wife. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Mayor says all above the police department. 
I'll tell you that. What we have to do is, hey, got to describe little shit going on here. Here's what's going on. Talk to your police chief or whatever. He knows me. Yeah, yeah, no donuts are distributed on these occasions, my friends. I'll tell you that. You know, it's just sheer knowledge, sheer knowing each other and having the connections in, in this town, which in a way is our savior. In, in many ways, you're looking at it, really, when you think about it. So that's the scoop on the poop. Uh, we're having a really good day today, and they've been really good. We made a little money today on Super Chat. Lately, we've been... I wouldn't say killing it, but uh, doing okay. And this is great because it's extra money every month between the AdSense. And I, I'm not going to complain. I have actually no reason to complain, you know. And uh, this is extra money to put away. In fact, in fact, let me tell you something. How generous I am. And you don't see people on here doing what I do. And I don't have to advertise this, but I'm going to tell you, we just got dropped off a half hour. A regular driver paid him, you know, he waited for us. Just, he's ready to go. I said, uh, wait, 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 wait. I slip him a 500 piece. I said, here, this is toward a, an early bonus, Christmas bonus. Happiness on his face. I didn't have to give him 500 plus his fare. The guy's been good to us. He's efficient. We call him up. He picks us up at the door. And if there's too much shit, he helps us carry in the shit. I mean, this is what we're talking about, you know? This is our relationship to the people here. You treat them good. They remember that. They're going to remember you. They're going to be behind you all the way. I didn't have to throw him five. I felt generous. This has nothing to do with anything toward my uh, game plan of handing out a little bit of money to him to... Christmas season, which by the way, is not connected to my super chat. This is totally different. Either way, it's coming out of my pocket. But I'm not counting that in. I'm not counting it in at all. I slipped my driver 500 last time. I slipped him a thousand. I mean, you know, when somebody's doing good work for you and uh, their heart is into it, and you know, I, I make up, uh, I would say, a considerable amount of his monthly income. Although he has another bike now that he'll rent out. He's just trying to be creative, you know. And when the tourists come into town, he makes some business from them. Now, it's a three-day weekend here. Three days, some kind of holiday on Monday. So uh, he'll pick up a little business. He picks up people at the port. He, a lot of stuff he does, resorts. So, you know, he's making a living. He's making a living. But I will say that a good chunk of his income is from, is from us. Because uh, we use him almost almost on a daily basis almost on a daily basis but it's nice to see the look on somebody's face when they least expect it and they didn't ask for nothing now i'm going to tell you a story the guy that comes over to uh at the house to do our hair cutting and all that stuff right he's a eh, kind of a lady boyish type you know hard to describe this guy i know he's not straight okay nice guy i got into an accident not too long ago but he healed he messed up his shoulder um we tip him very well, so, you know, they're always coming to the house. And he can't just come to the house for me. You know, either Gilda or two of the kids, you know, get their hair cut to make it worthwhile. It's gasoline to come here and everything else. You know, you know how that works, right? It's only righteous. I tip him pretty well, right? But, you know, it's, it's kind of like this out here, this train of thought where he sees me live in a, in a half-decent house and uh, that we tip him well. And uh, he's been inside our house. That's where he cuts our hair. Yes, in our air-conditioned living room. That's right. You got that right. And we take care of him. Okay. Now, they, they automatically make an assumption, you know. They think in hard times, they can go hit you up for money. Uh-uh. We don't fall into that. We're not in a loan business here, okay? And Gilda told them very politely, straight off, no, we don't have any money. We don't do that. We don't lend out money. The only person we lent out money was our friend Jerna, a thousand pesos. She did come back a week later, and I forgot all about it, to be honest with you. I wouldn't have even said nothing about that at all. She's an old good friend. But she came back and she paid her thousand pesos. I thought that was great. That was great. You know, now, of course, we know Jerna a long time, her family. If something really bad happened with one of the kids, you know, yeah, we would definitely help contribute to the hospital or something for her. 
You know, my generosity goes beyond giving a couple hundred pesos or something to thousand somebody. I just, you know, I, you. I mean, you got to have compassion. If you don't have compassion, you have nothing. There are certain situations where you can't have compassion for somebody, and I think the very obvious thing will probably come to mind: why I don't have compassion for certain people. So we don't have to go into that. It's better we don't even mention names. It's pretty obvious who. It's more than one person. But you know, don't、uh, don't always announce to the local community of when you're going to be generous, because they're going to make an assumption that hey, I could hit you up any time. That's one of the bugaboos out here. That's one of the bugaboos. Okay, and like you know, the hair stylist guy. He's pretty good too, though. He's always looking to do something to her hair, to coloring, straightening, whatever. Try to make more money off us. He's not making a lot of money. He either has his little salon and been tying, or he has some work for somebody doing it. Does the side jobs to make money. And you know, like a lot of people that are trying to make ends meet, come into some hard times. I'm glad to see we got more people coming up here. You go to, you know, you go into some hard times, and they figure, well, you know, they like me, and you know, you know, maybe I could borrow some money from them, and. But you gotta be like, just straight out. You gotta be like, just straight out, just from the get go. Just tell them. Just tell them no. We don't. We don't do that, and we're not gonna do it. You know, because once they hit you up and you give in, well, truthfully, they're gonna be hitting you up more. So that's one thing I could I could definitely teach you about this. You've heard it before. Hey, we hit eleven thousand subs, by the way. Eleven thousand subs. Eleven thousand subs. Yeah, nobody ever thought that would happen. I'm still here. Nobody thought that would happen either, huh? Live and learn. Live and learn. Just play it right. Stay out of trouble. Don't commit any crimes, and you know, remain crime-free. And、uh, don't take the bullshit either. That's what I'm saying. But you know, take proper measures that you feel you have to take in your life to deal with certain things on here. That's my advice. That is my advice. My advice. I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but、uh, woo! I guess who that is? Right now, but、uh, how about a little,、uh, little memories here? <laughs> I can make you disappear. <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh my God! Seriously, Whew, people never learn, man. I'm telling you. Oh, the humanity! Listen to all these titles I got here: nutrition, not starvation; be a winner, not a dreamer. In response to Mr. Blazer's thoughts, oh, the humanity! Spread the love, Roberto. Shoveling food in mouth creates gastrointestinal problems. The winter getting frustrated is proof of the pudding. Roberto just can't win. Fazio is not working in 146 degree heat. Breaking news: I've been framed. There we go, and、uh, many, many others. We're here to please, but you know we can't please everybody. And I never expected to please everybody on here. Shit, I don't even please myself. I don't have to. <laughs> Maybe we should get together a fund or blow up dolls for certain people. They could probably really use one. Pretend they have a girlfriend. Pretend that they have a girlfriend. Hey, this is my woman. <laughs> Somebody to go to bed with and not feel alone. And maybe like a little voice recorder in there. Please me, please me. Do it again. Do it again! Oh, you make me feel so good! Oh, you make me feel so good! Do it once more! Wow, you are large! You are large! Boy, now that would be a present for one of these people, and you can get it too. I'm sure. Go online. I'm sure you'll find lots of stuff like that. That'll be your little companion. <laughs> You know what I get a laugh at when I'm called little man? The guy who says it is about three inches shorter than me. That's the humor on that one. At least three inches shorter than me. 
and about five feet wider. <laughs> okay, that's a that's a real laugh. Okay, like Barry is also five foot eight. Really, he's taller than me. I'm only five seven. I don't lie about my height. I have no reason to. I'm fine. I like to idealistically be about five ten. To be honest with you, I, I think I think that's an ideal height for most men. I, I think so. That's just my opinion. But I'm happy for what I got. What, what else can I do? Oh God, something ridiculous on the Facebook feeds and advertisements. Buy these pills, and they're not talking about your pecker. Buy these pills, and you're going to grow your height by another six inches. Hey, people really fall for that. <laughs> well, guess what? Some people do. Some people actually do. It takes all kinds, I guess. Just like the X-ray glasses. You remember them? When you were a kid, you see him advertised in magazines and shows this guy with big bugging eyes. He's shocked, you know. He's got the glasses on and he's seen this the silhouette of the woman naked, like behind her clothes. Oh, it became it became a research. They're not putting that out again. Some company is putting out these glasses, trying to imply that wear these glasses, you can see through their clothing. And I said, it takes a certain mentality. For people to buy something like this, like wishful thinking, yeah, I'd like to have a pair of those. That's the closest thing I'm going to come to seeing a woman naked. Imagine if I could just wear these glasses and walk around, and I could see through their clothing. <laughs> no, we we haven't come up with that technology yet. Well, actually, we do. The military has. They could actually see it through, uh, you know, infrared and all that. They can see right through a building and see how many perpetrators are behind that wall. The technology is out there, but it's not. Which could be incorporated in a, in a, in a, a pair of sunglasses. I mean, that's just not going to happen. Not for a long time, I would think. You know, military use only. But they have it. I mean, it's out. You know, I don't know if it's a thermal thing. If it's a floor, F fleur, F L U R, F L I R, rather, based on a, a heat trail or otherwise. But they they do have it out. But I just really don't see. But that's never going to come out in a pair of sunglasses. That's just uh, isn't going to happen. Okay, we're going to do a long show. We came on at a funky time, as I said. We do not, we do not come on here. We do not come on here at any particular scheduled time. And uh, that's what we did this afternoon. But I must say, chicken parmesan. If you really want to go to restaurants, you write me private. But it's really excellent. I got half of it. For later on, as a snack or something, I'll eat it later on. Sauce, everything, just perfect. Well, of course, I've had better. I mean, really, yeah. this is the Philippines, but the closest thing you're going to get. Yeah, looks like the volcano Ubinas, U B I N A S, has exploded in South America, folks. And on here, if you go to extreme weather, it's called extreme weather. And this was posted 20 minutes ago. We got to get the news on here too. Volcano Ubinas exploded in South America. It looks pretty ominous. Incredible footage of the eruption. What do they have to say here? Free solitaire. Free solitaire. That's not what we want. But let's get through this. Design procedures. Okay, here it goes. On August 21st. Volcano erupted in the department of Capoeira in southern Peru. A strong explosion caused a column of ash and strong explosion with the volcano. Wow, man, it's happening! I am telling you guys, it's happening all over the world. There's been more volcanic shit going on, you know. Even old faithful, old faithful. There's a lot of swelling on the ground going on with that. It's not because it's happy to see you either. It's going down, brother. Of course, we got Pinatuba out here, another volcano. You know, the Ring of Fire. We're all in the Ring of Fire out here. Well, you know, Hawaii, other Pacific Island chains, here in the Philippines. It's all around us. It's happening. Whether you want to believe that or not, I mean, how do you prepare for something like that? I guess it's really hard. It's really hard to prepare for that. Just you know, don't you know, make a home within a distance from a freaking volcano. That might make some sense, don't you think? It might. But people figure if land is cheap and everything else, you know, live close to a volcano. Maybe nobody wants to live there, and real estate should be awful cheap. But 
look at the price you're paying unless you want to you know a similar event to pompeii pyroclastic you know steam of ash that'll just melt you the ash itself will form around you and you look like a goddamn statue it's happened no one in once just don't live that close to a volcano and i admit i lived when i lived in hawaii i lived about mm, as a crow would fly about maybe 10 miles from the volcano the one that's always active killed away but it really never affected my my town my subdivision but we didn't live that far away but we were sort of kind of in plateau but we were uphill so if it came over it would take quite a bit of pooling to get into our subdivision so that would have been quite a feat but it, it can happen just you know live wisely don't live next to a freaking volcano the same as don't put stupid fucking shows that's on that's going to incriminate you we got a a dude in jail right now who's pacing back and forth like a freaking proverbial bobcat in a cage. He ain't liking it. Use your sensibility. But anyway, <laughs> my God. Sometime next month, we got to head back to Cebu. Oh, God. Her friends again. She's got a friend. She's got a friend that's going to be leaving the country. She lives in the uh, Os Oslo, whatever. And then she has a birthday to attend and meet up with some other friends. I said, how many people do you know in your life? I said, damn, she's got hundreds and hundreds of friends, not to mention relatives. Here in my town here, oh, please. I don't think I've ever had that many friends in my life. Remember, I've been coming to Santa Fe before she did. Now she lives here, but I'll tell you what. Well, she's a Filipino. Very sociable people, especially with other women. You meet them all over. You meet them in stores. You meet them in restaurants. You meet them at Zumba. You make all these friends. My God, she's as famous for the mayor's wife. We've been invited over for a birthday party that we went to with the mayor's wife. I mean, Jiminy Cricket, you know, we've made... You know, we've made friendships here. and Well, certainly she has. And we've made a lot of connections here in town. That's an important thing for many reasons. We won't go into it. Just trust me on that. <laughs> a devious laugh for good reasons here. Anyway, I got to go. There's no dialogue here. Just got some looky-loos, some looky-loo trolls out. But we'll, we'll keep this broadcast on later. You'll see it on a, once I sign off. We'll leave it on. We'll take it off. The show that I pop on is an unannounced, unscheduled show, like most most of mine actually are. Uh, and we will come back at another time, of course, with very informative. And we're kind of fooling around with the names on here. There's going to be one last name change on here, because I'm always trying to get it right. you know. So we'll see what happens on that. I just have to think of a, an appropriate title handle for my show. It's got to emphasize the Philippines, of course. It's where I live. And that's where some of my information comes from and some of my discussions is the Philippines, of course. It's, remember, it's more fun in the Philippines. Now, if you're not a subscriber to my show, please consider subscribing and hit the uh, reminder button. And always remember the future. Hit that thumbs up. It helps with our algorithms. Algorithms. And that's a word you never used to hear 20 years ago, certainly. I don't think, I don't know if anybody, in what context they've used it in, I, I don't know. I know they use it here on YouTube. I get the gist of what it's all about. But I, I've never heard anybody talking about algorithms 20 years ago. Okay, yeah, okay. I guess I have to find another paint can to try to open. That was funny. Not that I can't open a paint can. Uh, some companies of paint, they have this uh, paint tops that are practically hermetically fucking sealed. If you look around there, there's usually an indicator on there. That you can pull it up or pull a strip around the outside. Now, what our good yellow friend there was trying to have a good laugh on me with that. I'll guarantee you, even he couldn't get that top off. He was just took his fucking, I don't know, skill saw or something and say, fuck this. And he would have just turned the skill saw on and just cut the fucking cap. Now, of course, I'm capable of taking a cap off a paint kit. Traditional metal tops. You put a screwdriver in there, come all the way around, it's off, no problem. 
take a minute. But some of these companies, because they're packed for distance where they ship from, they don't want to mess on their shipping. So it's practically the top is hermetically sealed. But generally, like I said, there's always some indicator on there. You know, lift on here or whatever. Or there usually is a strip of plastic around there. You can just strip it around and just pull the top off. This particular company, which is the paint that I had, did not have that. And yes, it was a pain in the ass. It was a pain in the ass. And you needed patience. That's why I'd never be a doctor, because I never have any patience. Ha ha. I didn't have any patience for that. I said, here, you deal with this, honey. I don't want to deal with it. So I delegated it to her. And even she had a hard time getting that sucker off, but she managed. But even she had to use some clippers of sort of the end to clip some of the plastic siding off there. So two people on the same job, you know, one at a time, trying to figure out what's the best way to open the top of the can. So that explains that. Although we know some fat guy that's probably going to die from the stupid thing he's doing to his body, of course, had to make comment on that. Yeah, I am tactile. It's true. Rather than you showing me a fucking diagram how to do it, just tell me how to do it. Show me how to do it and I'll do it successfully. I'm not a patient person to sit there and look at a fucking diagram, which half of it is in fucking Chinese anyway, no matter what the product is. I'll tackle it a different way, but I'll take the tactile approach to things. Like, hey, dude, just show me how to do this fucking thing and I'll do it. And that's how I work it. That's me. I don't expect everybody to be the same. But that being said, I'm here because you're there. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on our next show. Please subscribe and thrive. I'm here because you're there, as always, as always.